Hi, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation. Tonight, we are joined by Montgomery Countryside Alliance board member, creator of Foundry Admission Strategies, and local historian, Kenny Schultz. Tonight, in the latest Historic Properties Lecture, Kenny will be discussing the Ag Reserve's hidden spots and some of the history behind them. We'd like to thank tonight's sponsor, the R. Edwin and Winsome S. Brown Foundation. Reminder, please remain muted during the presentation. You can send any questions you have throughout in the chat, and as always, there will be an opportunity at the end to unmute for Q&A. If you enjoyed tonight's presentation, please make sure to check out our website. And without further ado, Kenny, take it away. Okay, thanks, Dottie. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks to everybody for being here. A lot of familiar faces, which is which is great. I was just telling Dottie and, and Melissa that I've changed my mind about what I wanted to talk about tonight about four different times this afternoon. Um, I had initially thought we would do some Revolutionary War stuff, and then I just really wasn't feeling it, and then the power went out, and so I didn't have internet for a while, and so I couldn't get what I wanted done there. Um, and where I landed, was you know it's really nice out now and people are hopefully able to to get out of their houses and explore a bit and so what i thought we could walk through is some of the some of the cooler places i think that are worth checking out you know if you've got a a free saturday and it's nice weather in the, in the coming weeks these these would all be interesting places to go and check out and as i mentioned adadi and melissa these are i believe all public places so you're not gonna get in trouble by anybody or chased off of private property by by going anywhere here so i'm gonna try to keep you all out of trouble the best that i can and and i'm also going to try to do this in a little bit of an interactive manner because while i recognize it's cool to see some of these structures in these places if you don't know where they are it's not super helpful to be able to go and visit them so i'm gonna be sharing the slides and then i'm gonna pull out and show you on google maps uh, where these locations are so that if you wanted to go out and try to check them out, you can do that. So the first place that I wanted to start with is the Trundle Farm Barn. This is out on Martinsburg Road in Dickerson. The, the Trundle Farm, you know, I've talked about the Trundles many times, but the Trundles came to this area, this part of the Ag Reserve along the Potomac as early as the mid 1700s and became quite wealthy were very successful farmers, built a number of substantial plantations in this area, one of which that we talk about all the time is Annington out by uh, White's Ferry. Otho Trundle built his farm up here, um, right along the Potomac, just kind of overlooking the Potomac River uh, in, the, in the 1820s. And he built this stone barn associated with, with his home around the same period. We think we think this barn is circa 1830, 1831. And um, it's it's an absolutely beautiful stone barn. I, if, if you've been past it recently, it's it's not in great shape. And um, it, it concerns me greatly because some of the uh, like significant structural uh, stones at, towards the base, you can almost even see it here in the 1970s picture above kind of that, that lower, door opening the the stone running across the top of that is cracked it's it still is like that today so I, I i suppose if it's been like that since the 70s and nothing has fallen down yet that's that's a good thing um but it, it's certainly one of those places that concerns me with with what the future looks like here um it's it's thought that um that, that this barn was actually used by civil war soldiers at some point during during the war um, to to stop and, and rest uh, on their way north. Um, but I haven't really seen a whole lot of evidence to confirm that. So if you want to get out and check, you can't, I mean, this this barn is on private property. It is somebody's property. So you can't really get out and walk through the barn, but it's right next to Martinsburg Road. In fact, what's funny is when Otho Trundle built his farm and he built the barn, Martinsburg Road did not exist because it was the 1820s. And later when they when they built the road, it went straight through the center of his property. I, I believe they paid him for that. But that is why it's kind of this weird thing where the, the barn is actually on the other side of the road from the main house. So if you wanted to drive past it and check it out, you just go out White's Ferry Road and then you go up on, you go north on Martinsburg. 
and it's really impossible to miss. It's right before you kind of get up to um, kind of the, the Dickerson power station. And I'll just show you so you can see how close it really is. So you can see um, the barn is right here. It's, it's kind of hard to see. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just off the road, very easy to spot. But it's a it's a cool spot to to check out. Um, and you can see here. I mean, it's it's kind of in rougher shape. I think this picture is from actually from last year when they did the street view. Um, but certainly an interesting spot to check out, especially because I'm concerned that ten years from now it might be a pile of stones and not a barn. So make sure that if you are out. Ability to go go see that one, I would go and do that. The the other place, the next place I'm going to talk about, I'll show it to you here, is the uh, let's see here, it's the White's Ford um, Crossing site. So, in in the fall of 1862, the Confederate Army crossed the Potomac River at White's Ford. And, um, you know, this was obviously a significant event. It's, it's, it's what allowed the Confederate forces to move north for what ended up being the Battle of South Mountain and then the Battle of Antietam shortly after. Um, and, and White's Ford is talked about a lot, I think, around here when we talk about historic Civil War sites, but there aren't actually that many people that know exactly where it is. And so I just wanted you to see that the best way if you wanted to go check out White's Ford, and I think that you definitely should, especially at 6 or 7 p.m. at night or early, early in the morning, it's an absolutely beautiful spot. But if you park at the Dickerson Conservation Park, which is, I mean, you could swing by and check out the barn and then right after that go through this Dickerson Conservation Park, there's a little parking lot here. Um, it's kind of a little hidden gem. And there's a pathway onto the CNO Canal that runs right through here. And if, if you walk south on the, the CNO Canal, um, about a half a mile, maybe a little bit more, if you look out, you'll see the tip of this island in the Potomac. The White's Ford Crossing site basically comes right across the nose of this island. Um, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like from the ground. Let's see here. Okay, so. So this is kind of how it looks if you um, are at the site. So I took this picture around like 6 p.m. this time of year last year. It, it's really, really pretty. It is um, fascinating to me that, you know, I, I've taken my kids and we've walked, you can walk out to that island very, very easy. The water goes up to maybe your knees. Um, it's a little bit of a fast current, you got to be careful, but um, beyond that, you could continue to walk across the Potomac with, with relative ease. So this idea of it being a fording site, a, a site with flat ground underneath the water, you know, that was the case in the 1860s, it's still the case today. Um, in fact, the, the American Legion every year has started to do an event where they, um, they cross over just to kind of see what, what that would have been like. Um, so, so certainly a, a really interesting place to check out, especially if you're spending time on, on the CNO Canal. The, the other place that, that I think is um, right off the road, and many of you, you've probably passed it a bunch of times, I know I had, um, but never stopped until recently, is the Sugarloaf Mountain Chapel. And this chapel was built by William Hilton in the 1860s. Um, he, he actually built a number of uh, historic homes around the Barnesville area um, associated with, with the Hilton Funeral Home. There um, was a cabinet maker, you know, across from the Hilton Funeral Home was until last year the, uh, the Christ Episcopal Church, which he had a hand in building in the 1870s, um, unfortunately came down last year. But, um, but this one built in 1861 of brick, uh, a bit more robust than the, the, the Christ Episcopal Chapel. It, it's, um, here, I'll show you out here. This one is way, way off um, or way at the top part of the Ag Reserve. So, so I marked all my locations because I knew I'd get lost if I didn't.
Okay. So if you drive out through Barnesville and you go through Comus and you just continue um, going north, you will go right past um, the, the Sugarloaf uh, Chapel. So it's right off the side of the road. And um, it's, it's, it's one of those places, again, where it, it's easy to fly by because you're going pretty fast at this point, but, but it's, it's well worth the stop. The, the cemetery here is really interesting. There's a bunch of old stones, um, a, lot of, a lot of names that you would recognize that we've talked about before, but also a lot of families out in these parts that um, I know far less about. Um, and Glenn, I don't know if you have any insight on this one, but I, I've just always found this cemetery to be kind of interesting, just given how far off the far north into the Ag Reserve towards uh, Sugarloaf it actually is located. So another place that that is worth the trip, but is a little bit more difficult to get to is this Fisher Farm barn. Um, so another stone barn. I'm actually not a huge barn person, but I, I love the old stone ones that we have here in the Ag Reserve. This one built around 1800 and the Fisher family had a, a large farming property um, up um, kind of around the Dickerson area. And from, from overhead imagery, it looks like the, the land was farmed until, or the, the farm structures, the other structures that came with the barn were around until about the 1970s. And then they were largely all torn down. Um, I think they had just fallen into a, a state of, of disrepair. And so as a result, the only structure left here is, is this, this um, stone barn. What I think is really fascinating about it is if you look at that picture on the right, you can see where um, I think it's Joseph uh, Fisher carved his initials. It's really kind of light, but you can see the JRF base barely there with kind of these, I don't know, it's almost like this X marking that he put into the stone. And that was done in the very, very early 1800s. And so it's, it's still there today, still pretty clear. And um, it, it's, a, it's, a cool, it's a cool sight to see. It's really small. I haven't been able to see inside of it. It's been preserved. It, it went through some, some restoration work a number of years ago. But what's fascinating about it is because the other structures associated with this farm are, are long gone at this point, it it's kind of just sits out on its own. You almost just stumble upon it. And the, the way that you stumble upon it is if you go to the, uh, the Woodstock Equestrian and you park there, there's a number of, of trails um, that you can walk. And you can find this stone barn. It's, it takes a little bit of a hike. Um, it's a little bit of a walk, but it sits out in the middle of a field by itself. I will show you what that looks like. So let's see here. So if you're in Poolsville and you drive up to Bellsville and then you're headed out to towards the Dickerson area, you'll pass by the Woodstock, Woodstock Equestrian Park. And there's there's parking on two sides. So there's parking on this side, and then there's on, on the left side of the road as you're leaving um, the Bellsville area, and then there's also another parking lot on the right side. So the first thing I would say is if you haven't gone up here before and, and parked your car and just checked out this property, it's really, really fascinating. This is the site of the old Brewer family plantation. And while many of the structures associated with that plantation are long gone, you can still see the foundations of the old stone barn. You can kind of see it here kind of in the trees. And then they have what I believe is the historic um, preserved enslaved quarters, which is kind of this, um, this little structure in the middle, and then a couple of other kind of outbuildings that were associated with the property. They've all been uh, restored and maintained, so they're, they're kind of interesting to go and check out. Um, and then obviously there's a lot of uh, equestrian related stuff around it with a bunch of trails that um, are four horses, but you can certainly um, uh, Oh, interesting. Um, 
you can certainly go and um, explore around these trails. I've run them, I've walked them with the kids. They're a great place for the dog, things like that. Um, so Glenn just mentioned that Joseph was, um, and his family was buried on this property um, and then moved to Monocacy Cemetery, which is actually something that we've, we've seen a lot of with, um, especially in the early 1900s, a lot of these old farmsteads had these little family burial plots and then for, for various reasons, um, those, at least the stones, right, Glenn? Um, <laughs> but perhaps everything else moved out to Monocacy, um, largely around the beginning of the 20th century. Um, to, I think just to, to make sure that they were located in a place that wasn't gonna be encroached on by development. So, so I mentioned the Brewer Estate kind of on the right side, but if you park on, on the left side of the road, leaving Bellsville, um, there's a bunch of trails that come out of this parking lot and they go off through the woods and they largely skirt um, these various farm fields. It's, it's a really, it's really pretty walk. Um, a lot of different kind of options and paths to take. I, I really enjoy being out here, but all the way out, way, way out here is the barn. Um, and you can kind of see, I mean, it really just sits out there on its own now. Um, what previously had been here, and it's, it's hard to see with the woods, but a lot of the, the farmstead buildings were in and around here along this farm road trail. And I think that you can actually park right in here if you wanted to, to make that walk much, much easier to get to. Cause as you can see, I mean, it's, it's a good distance from, uh, from that, um, the initial parking lot that I showed you just out of curiosity. Yeah, so it's about, it's a little over a mile from that parking lot. And with the trails and stuff, it's probably about a mile and a half walk. Um, but well, well worth it. it. It's nice too, because when you go out there, ne nobody's ever there. And, and so um, I always, you know, anytime I'm out on these trails, I like to go out there and, and check that out just because it's a, it's a really nice, um, quiet spot to be. And Jack asked if you can stay on the trail the whole way. Yeah, so so the trail system out here is great because it it kind of um, if you see kind of where I've got the the Woodstock Equestrian Park mapped, it, it stretches all the way from over there on um, I guess that's twenty eight all the way out towards uh, I think this is Wayshi Road out here, and so all of this land in here in the middle, um, it's it's farmed but the trails largely kind of skirt the edge of these woods and then pass through some of the woods to get to new, um, to new farmland and whatnot. And so, yeah, it's, it's all, the trails are all kind of in loops. So you, you, um, you, you won't get lost. I will tell you, you gotta be careful because I've gone out a couple of times and figured out like the loop that I was on was five or six miles. And so you've got some walking to do, but, but certainly it's, it's well worth exploring um, this time of year. It's su such a, a pretty area and it's relatively undisturbed. You won't, you won't really see too many houses out there. Um, so really cool spot. Okay. So next we have the Pierre Family Cemetery. So I, I've talked about this one before, but I, I think, you know, there's, there's, and I'll, I'll mention Monocacy at the end, because I think that's worth checking out. So obviously we've got Monocacy, which is kind of the big, I think the big rural cemetery hub, and then outlying throughout this part of the Ag Reserve, we have a number of small family burial plots, some of which were moved to Monocacy, but many of which are still existent in, in where they, you know, were init initially um, placed. And the Pierre Family Cemetery up in the Comus area, right at the base of uh, Sugarloaf Mountain, is, is one of those family burial plots that has remained, you know, constant since, since the, uh, I think, the mid to late 1800s. And the Pierre family was a wealthy family that owned a number of lands and a couple of uh, farms in the in the Comus area. They built this cemetery. It, it's really fascinating because now it's kind of at the end of this court in in kind of a, I wouldn't call it a housing development, but where some new houses have been built. And I'll, I'll show you this in a second. But if you look at overhead pictures from from the 1970s, what's interesting about this site is 
that the, the Pierre farmhouse was actually quite close to this cemetery. It's long gone now. There's absolutely zero trace of it, but it was a pretty big, interesting house. Um, but otherwise it was in, you know, the absolute middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, Comus is already rural to begin with. Um, at that time, back in the 70s, there was, there was really nothing here. And the other interesting thing is my understanding is that there was a time where there was some discussion about developing the land around this, around this site to make some kind of like a, a golf course or a golf club or something. Um, but apparently that, that fell through, um, thankfully, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, so if you wanted to check this out, and again, this cemetery is definitely on public land. Um, if you go up to Comus and then you, um, you know, right before, so the Comus Inn is right here. Um, if you make a left here on Comus Road as you're leaving town and you come down this road, you will come across, um, let's see, I think it's Briar, Briarly Field Lane. And if you go to the end of this lane, you can see, you know, there's, there's some newer, really, really big houses that have been built in the last 20 or 30 years, but you get all the way to the end of this road and it ends in this almost court um, down here. And um, yeah, it's right here. And it's the cemetery is really kind of right in here off the side of this, this road. So it's just kind of sitting there. It's interesting. The old Pierre family uh, large farm was, was kind of over in here in, in this brush um, where this was located. And, um, you know, as you can see, no longer there, but the cemetery very much still there. So you can easily park your car here and get out and check it out. It's a really peaceful spot um, and, and certainly a, a spot that's worth exploring and definitely off the beaten path. I don't think many people know of it, not that it's necessarily hidden. It's just so far off of Comus that it's, it's way out there. Um, and the question about where deceased family members only moves when property was sold, transferred. Uh, not, I don't, uh, Glenn, please jump in on that, but I don't think so. I mean, I think that there, we've seen plenty of cases where there are old cemeteries. I'm thinking of like Mother's Delight, for example, in, in the Boyd's area where um, individuals were moved, but the, the, the farmland wasn't necessarily sold off. Um, but that, that is one reason why sometimes this did happen. Um, So another interesting place that is, is um, worth checking out, you just got to be a little bit careful, is the, the Got Plantation Ruin. So these are out towards the Boyd's area. They, this is another spot that is located right off um, the side of the road. And I'll, I'll show you where on the map. Um, the, the Got family came to this part of the Ag Reserve in the late 1700s. They, they became very prosperous with um, farming tobacco initially, and I think they also shifted to wheat like most farmers in the region did. Um, they built a structure in the very early 1800s that was actually made of wood. And then around 1860, uh, Benjamin got expanded this home and he built onto it with this large stone addition, kind of doubled the size of the house here. And um, the house was, was lived in by the Gott family until I believe the 1920s. And in the 1920s, there was a pretty significant fire that basically destroyed all of it. And as a result, my understanding is that the structure there was, was largely abandoned at that point and never lived in again. And over the years, the walls have just continued to crumble down. And so at this point, all that's really left are what you see here, um, which is which is actually the same, it's one wall. These both of these pictures are showing the same thing. But what you can see, what's kind of fascinating, is if you look closely in the in the upper part of the wall, there is the second floor um, chimney, and then down below would have been the first floor one. So we've got this two story structure um, with the chimney. Again, um, an, another spot that's 
a little bit in the woods. You a lot of people, if you're going out towards the Boyd's area from Poolsville, you'll go right past it. It's right right near some some power lines. I know um, my six year old used to go to Elf School out there, and so we would drive past it all the time um, because it's right there on the on the side of the road. But it's a it's another spot that is on public property. I believe it's state property, and so you. Uh, are certainly able to to stop and check it out if you would like. Um, let's see if I can find it. Okay. So the the best way to get here is if you um, if you go out 107. You know 107 hits 28 at that that fork in the road. Before you get there, you go through. You know you kind of do this little cut through on Sugarland. And then you go um, up here on, uh, what is this, uh, White Ground Road. You take White Ground and you basically just follow it until you, um, if you hit the power lines, you've gone too far. So the map marks it here, but the, the ruins are actually right in here. Um, and so that's kind of the easiest way to remember is if you're, if you're heading away from town and you hit the, uh, you hit the power lines, you're, you're too far. So um, let's see, it's a little bit hard to see in here just based on when they took the picture, but the this structure up here is, is actually what you were just looking at pictures of. It's hard to see, sorry. But yeah, so this is another place where just off the side of the road, I mean, it's right there. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating structure. This is another one where I think like, Good chance that 20 years from now that structure is gone because there's not really much to do to preserve it at this point. Um, so it's it's really just sitting there and, and being helped by gravity. Um, so check it out now. Take your pictures now before um, before it is no longer with us. So the, the Upton Darby one, this is, um, I wouldn't say this is off the beaten path, but I, I think it's one of those places that um, you could go up close and check out, but a lot of people don't just because maybe they think somebody's living here. But this, this home built in, in the 1850s um, by uh, the, the Dar and lived in by the Darby family is right next to the pool store down in Seneca. So if, if you're ever going down there and you want to stop, there's plenty of parking down there. This home is, is owned by the county. There's nobody in it living there. Um, I guess technically this would be, you know, county property, but I've on many occasions stopped and just walked up and checked it out and looked in the windows. It's, it's an empty house. Um, it's a really beautifully constructed house. I think it kind of blends a lot of interesting Victorian and Gothic elements of, you know, kind of rural farmhouses in the, in the area here. Um, and, and you can see kind of on the right how it looked in the early 1980s. But, um, you know, if, if you go down to the pool store, I would recommend stopping there and, and, and checking this one out. And then kind of relate it, or at least you could do this on, on the same trip, is, and, and I know many of you have, and I think maybe you guys even did um, a little bit of a walking tour here, but the Seneca Marble Quarry site is really worth checking out if you haven't. So this, this marble quarry um, structure. Uh, oh, okay. So someone said somebody is living in the property next to pool store now. Okay. That's news to me. That must be relatively recent. Um, so maybe don't go look in the windows, <laughs> but certainly you can still get uh, pretty close to the home. So um, interesting. I'll have to check in on that. Um, so, so the marble quarry site, this is kind of the, the stone cutting mill. So in the days of, of the, the mining or the, the pooling of the, the, um, this, the marble off the side of the hills, and you can kind of see the picture here, which was taking place throughout the early 1800s, there was a need to, to cut that stone into shapes to be used in construction. And so this building built in the 1830s is where that was done. Now it's long abandoned, as you can see here from the pictures. And again, I know some of you have probably been there, but um, it's, it's an interesting site that's worth checking out. It's unfortunately, there's been a lot of, of vandalism and graffiti at this site, but I think there is some efforts ongoing 
it up, um, which would be great. And I think it's a it's a pretty cool spot um, to to go. You don't have to actually go inside the building. In fact, I think they don't want you to do that. But you can certainly take some paths that that get really really close to it. Um, so let's see here. So if you're in the Seneca area, um, obviously we have the pool store down here. And this is the, the Upton Darby house that I was just talking about that I guess somebody is living in. Um, but, but certainly, you know, if you're at the pool store, you can check it out. It's a, it's a really cool old, old house to check out. And then really right across the road down Shifley Mill Road um, at the end of it, you come all the way down um, towards the, towards the CNO. There's some parking down here in the brush. And then the, um, the Seneca Mill um, and Quarry ruins are here. Um, and it's a, it's a really cool site. Um, this, is, this is a neat place to check out if you haven't been before. Um, again, it's unfortunately, you can see a lot of the graffiti there, um, but, but certainly a, a cool, and you can see <laughs> the no trespassing sign for sure as well. So maybe take pictures from behind the signs, but, um, but, a, but an interesting spot um, to, to take a look at. Okay, and then the 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 last place that I wanted to mention is the Monocacy Cemetery. Um, Glenn's paying me to do this. Um, no, um, I, I I just you know, and I've said this before to this group, and this is probably not the right group to say it because I think you all you know very much already appreciate it. But I am just really struck by how often. Um, I talk to, to people who are, are longtime residents of the area and I'll mention the Monocacy Cemetery and they'll say like, oh, I've, I've never stopped by there. I've never even been out there before. And I, I just think you're, you're missing an absolute treasure of a place. It's, it is truly a unique rural historic cemetery that is active and very much um, I think very much larger than people anticipate if you haven't been there before. Um, I just, a good friend of mine, I just brought her there three weeks ago to check out one morning and she's, she's lived outside of pools all her entire life and um, had never been there before and was really struck just by um, the, the size and the scope of, of the cemetery and just, just how, how beautiful it is. A lot of that is, is thanks to, to Glenn and the work that he's done over the last number of years. Um, but just a very well-preserved cemetery. It's it's a really great place, especially around 6 p.m. on a on a weekend night or even a weekday to to go out there and just I what I would recommend doing, um, or at least the way that I like to do it when I'm out there is I will park along West Hunter Road, and then um, let's see if I can show this. Okay, that's not what I want to do. I think the, the way is, is to park along West Hunter and then you can kind of walk in from the top and it's kind of downhill from there. You just got to walk uphill to get back to your car. Um, so if you go up to Bellsville here, and, and actually I've had a lot of people say that they didn't even know the cemetery was here because the um, kind of the hedgerows running along um, Route 28 here sometimes make it hard to see in. But, um, but you can see from the overhead, I mean, it's a, it is a significant size spot, you know, um, for reference, this little structure in here is, is the old um, chapel. And a lot of the, a lot of the older stones are kind of towards the northern part of the site. So if you park along West Hunter Road here, you'll see a lot of the, the super old um, stones. And then there's you know, really kind of dispersed throughout the cemetery, um, a lot of old family names that you'll run across. Yeah, so Glenn says 13 acres. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, you know, again, a, a public spot, totally worth checking out. Um, if you like historic cemeteries, this is definitely a, a cool place. And what's great about it, again, largely thanks to Glenn, is a lot of work has been done to to map it and so if you go up to the chapel there's a there's a map of the entire cemetery so you can really kind of almost take a self-guided tour and, and check it out a, a number of 
um, veterans buried here, a, a lot of, you know, different family names that you're going to recognize from our talks, you know, so it really is where a lot of these, these stories kind of become interconnected at this location. Um, so strongly, strongly recommend that uh, you take some time and go check this one out if you haven't already. Okay, so with that, I know that was like a little bit disjointed back and forth, but I just wanted to kind of really cover those key areas. Um, and and I'm, I'm curious if anybody has other places that I didn't mention that you think are cool just for the sake of putting it out to the group that that's worth checking out. Um, and, and obviously, if you have any questions, more than happy to, to answer those. One neat place, Kenny, um, it's down towards Germantown on Clopper Road mm -hmm. is the old Clopper Mill, which is it's right off of Clopper Road and, um, and 118. OK. And from, from some of my reading, after Lincoln got assassinated, one of the um, conspirators knew a new, new family out in Germantown, and he actually um, hid out in the mill for a night or two before he could hook up with this family. And he was subsequently arrested at the farmhouse of this family. Huh. But you can, you, can, you can see, I think you can still see the old mill race running up off the creek. Yeah. And, and a lot of the stone foundations, similar to some of the pictures you've already shown. Yeah. No, that's cool. I'll have to check. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been there before. I'll have to check that out. That's kind of neat. And I also wanted to point out, I put a link in the chat to our recording on YouTube of Glenn's presentation with us, where he talks a little bit more about his process mapping Monocacy Cemetery. So if you're interested in Monocacy Cemetery, you can also check it out there. Um, Glenn, is, are, is Glenn still on with us? I just wanted to see. Um... Still there. Oh, hey, could, Glenn, could you just talk, because I'm actually, like, somebody asked this, and I think it's a good question, this, you know, and I think we've talked about before, but where you've got a bunch of these family farms that have these smaller family burial plots, right, that in many cases were then moved to Monocacy Cemetery. What, what's your understanding of, like, the reasons for that? Well, the understanding is that there was pretty much no cemetery out in Upper Montgomery County, area um, that uh, this was established. It, there was a tiny little um, cemetery around 1750 that we know of um, when the Chapel of Ease was uh, located there um, on that property. But then it expanded, became incorporated in 1874. And all of a sudden, everybody was like, wait, I can put my family in a cemetery, a real cemetery. And they literally started digging them up and carting them down the road. So, I mean, it was, we have a lot of records that show um, the, the um, reinterment of family members and along with their stones, they brought, they, they had these beautiful stones out on their family farms, uh, monuments, standing monuments, um, and they are now brought here. Um, one of the, you mentioned trundles right at the very, very beginning um, out, out at the, um, the power uh, yeah. plant. Yeah, that was a tragedy in itself um, yeah. because it was basically that whole cemetery was rolled over. Um, I, we, the Shreve family that is that was part of that family. Um, those stones were brought uh, to this uh, to Monocacy Cemetery. I don't know it by records if bodies were brought, but at least the stones were brought because they would have been destroyed. Um, but yeah, this it was very typical. Uh, There's a whole lot of uh, reinterments between. The incorporation in 1874 and about 1920. Interesting. Okay. I've, I've got a question for Glenn. <clears throat> for Jack, hi. Had you ever read about or heard about a Civil War era cemetery that would have been along 118 and 28? Um, back in the day, Darnstown was a signal flag location for the Union Army. Right. And they had, there was, if I remember right, there was a big old tree somewhere there in Darnstown proper <clears throat> that they built a signal flag platform and they could signal, you could see all the way up to um, Sugarloaf, if I remember right. Okay. For, for any mess. But 
I had read somewhere that there was an old um, Civil War cemetery, but I imagine, and, and this would have been, I think, mostly for soldiers dying from disease. Right. But then I think the, the folks, the soldiers were disinterred mm -hmm. and sent to their home states. But did you ever come across that? Well, there is a cemetery at exactly where you you mentioned it. It's 118 and uh, the the very end of 118 uh, at the intersection of 28. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So if you are coming down, if you're heading west on 118 and you hit 28, you're at that yeah. intersection there. Look to the caddy corner right. Uh, there you'll see a whole bunch of pine trees there. Right. Uh, that was the uh, Darnstown Baptist Cemetery. Um, all of the stones were toppled and buried. The bodies are still in the ground. It is now on hmm. private property. Um, you, there's nothing that you would even notice that there was a cemetery there. But um, I don't know that um, Civil War veterans may have been temporarily buried there. Um, the guy did uh, a mapping of the cemetery with um, where the markers were, but he didn't really say where, what names were associated with it, or he, maybe he kept a list outside of the map, but there he put X's where on this grid of where the bodies were buried. So we don't know that they might be Civil War uh, soldiers or um, part of the congregational people, but it was huge. I mean, wow. Um, it was a huge cemetery. But I mean, still there, but you, you would never know it. Never know. Yeah. It. Interesting. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. <laughs> I see a question in the chat that says, is the Black Rock Road, Black Rock Mill Road Mill part of the Ag Reserve? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's just outside of it because um, the, the Ag Reserve, if you're, you know, if you're going out 28, you know, right after 28 and 107 merge there, you go down and you cross that bridge over the, I think it's the Little Seneca Creek. Mm -hmm. At that point, you are out of the Ag Reserve when you when you cross. And so I think the, the Black Rock Mill is maybe another mile or two down the road. So it's, it's close, but just outside of the boundaries. However, <clears throat> it is in the park. It's in Seneca Creek State Park, so it's protected. Yes, yes, that's, that's a good point, yeah. Feel free to unmute and ask any questions at this time or leave a question in the chat. Kenny, one other site, and, and again, it's just out of the reserve and it's been gone for years, but when, when we first moved out to Germantown, which would have been close shucks, close to 40 years ago, on 118, as you're heading towards Germantown, when you go down that one steep curvy hill just after the transmission line right away, yeah. Yep. and you go over that little creek with the funky bridge, right on the left there, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use a, a politically incorrect term here, but there was a frame house there, when we for, or a frame building, when we first moved out into Germantown, and it was the old quote unquote colored school. Oh, interesting. And it was, it's written up in, a lady named Susan Soderberg wrote a, a nice book on the history of Germantown, and I'm pretty sure she captured it there. But just like all these other frame buildings, um, disrepair and, and termites and bugs, it, it came down not terribly long after we had moved to Germantown. But it was kind of neat to see the history of it. Because yeah. until I read her book, I didn't know what it was. Right. Um, but that's a, a part of the old legacy of the county that's gone now, unfortunately. Yeah, no, that, that I didn't know. I hadn't heard about that, but that, yeah. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of those types of structure. They're just not built for, you know, sustaining all of these, you know, centuries. Um, but I'm glad that she at least captured it somewhere so that it's it's there for for the record, if nothing else. But there is a school in Boyd's that's still there, and and also protected by the Boyd's historical group. Yes. Yep. The color school that's right there <clears throat> near where UMAC plays baseball. Yeah, yeah, right out there by um, Taylor Elementary, which is another right. interesting place to check out. You know, it's absolutely you know, named after I think William Taylor. Um, really interesting spot. I did have a question about Dawsonville. Is there are there any family cemeteries in in the Dawsonville little community there? Do you know? 
Fine, go for it. Yeah, they are. Um, okay, just curious because I had a yeah. There's a uh, private my cemetery. sister-in-law was a Dawson. That's why I was wondering. <laughs> right. Um, well, a lot of them you'll you will find them at Monocacy, but um, there is a the Dyson Bird um, Cemetery located on Locust Grove, right off uh, Sugarland Road. Okay. Um, it's very private. Um, it's, it, it's, uh, they don't want that posted on find a grave. Um, I had the opportunity, oh, I, I got a chance to meet, um, Irma bird before she passed. Um, and she just shared so much history there, but, uh, it was very, 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 very private. Um, but I don't recommend trying to find it. It's not worth it. Just take my word for it. Um, <laughs> that I'm also quite shocked that uh, as you move, uh, down Sugarland, uh, still in Dawsonville, but as you move down, um, that there weren't more family. You get to um, the Peter Family Cemetery at Montevideo, mm -hmm. um, which is also, I know it is definitely private, but I mean, if you ask Knight, you might get an invitation to see it. If you wanna see a colonial style family cemetery, as small as it is, it's the most perfectly set cemetery in Montgomery County. I, I, they're by far the number one, my favorite, uh, my favorite family cemetery. Hmm. Interesting. And you can look, you can find that on, if you know where Montevideo is, you can uh, locate it. It's on uh, the north, is it northwest corner of the property. Uh, you can zoom in on Google uh, and find that. Yeah, when we did when we did our last um, tour last fall, that was yeah. the, the exterior was open, and you could you could walk out and check out the cemetery out there. Yeah. Um, it, it is it's a it's a beautiful spot. And I'm sure lots of people have the question if Historic Medley will be doing any more in person tours anytime soon. Yes. Um, so I I don't have so I'm. So I'm actually talking with um, Montgomery history and trying to set something up for September. And then I would also kind of make a plug for, I know on the board for Monocacy Cemetery, we've been talking about um, doing something later this fall, kind of at the, at Monocacy Cemetery, just to get people out there to, to check it out. Because again, I think it's, it's well worth it. Um, so there, there are things coming and in the works. Um, so hopefully the next time we meet, maybe we can have a little bit more of a, some firm dates to start, to start planning off of. Just to extend that, we're gonna do a who's who um, at the cemetery. And if you can see over my shoulder here, these are the who's who people that are, uh, that we will be visiting. Yes. It's nice to have a face to go with the names of the graves you're standing over. Your future neighbors, right? Yes, I know them all. <laughs> hey, Kenny, have a great time in Paris next week. Yes, thank you. I'm looking oh, forward to wow. it. Wow. Paris, wow. Yes. yes. You're going to love it. And I would highly recommend, you, you um, were asking on Facebook for recommendations, Père Lachaise Cemetery, not kidding. Oh yeah, it's probably cool. Yeah, Paralysia yeah. Cemetery. Go visit uh, Jim Morrison. Light a candle on his on his on his grave. <laughs> Might do that. <laughs> Victor Hugo, right across from the path from him. We know how old Glenn is. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> a dated recommendation is to try to visit Versailles. Oh it's, yes, it's a, it's a cool tour. <laughs> yeah. Talk about gaudy living, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, and beheading. Yeah. Yeah. And beheading, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it didn't end so well. I wanted to point out as well, Denise left a great comment in the chat, which is the historic medley sites will be open over the next weekend for heritage mm. days. So there's some Montgomery history going on right now. Make sure to take advantage of the opportunity to check out sites that are open when they might not normally be. And there's more info about that on our blog as well. That's a great point. Well, I'd just like to say, I hope you all enjoyed tonight's presentation as much as I did and learned something new. If you think of any questions later, as always, you can email us at info at
we'd like to thank Kenny for this presentation, as well as our ongoing sponsors and contributors that help us keep our programs going because we love putting them on for you. And reminder, if you enjoyed tonight's program, please consider joining us for more upcoming events. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we'll be back in person on June 21st at 7 p.m. with Paul Kreingold in the Lost History of Potomac Marble at the Poolsville Presbyterian Church in the Sanctuary. 7 p.m. be there. <laughs> And as always, you can go to our website, PoolsvilleSeniors.org, for more info and registration for all of our events. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. 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 Thank you.